Hello, this is Craig, and this is a tutorial for using the alpha version of my avatar creation toolkit. Um, this is not a fully functional device, but it, you can use it, and it's kind of fun, so I figured I'd show you how to do it. So when it starts up, it loads up thumbnails of all of the avatars that have been created so far. Let's go ahead and select this one, because she's the most complicated. It loads up the layers, like you can see here. It's running on the tiniest computer imaginable, so I wouldn't worry uh, if it takes a little bit of time to load up. This is the character overview. So here we've got our name, which is Alexis. If we were to click on that, we could change it to whatever we wanted. Similarly, if we wanted to save, we could click, we could click here. Now this black box that shows up when you hover over save is the thumbnail that will get saved with your character. So if we were to click there, then there we are. And if we were to quit out of the game and start it up again, we would see that Alexis has a new name and a new print, a new thumbnail. So let's go ahead and change that back. So you can select a skin color. There's nothing particularly special about this this particular range of skin colors, it's just what I've happened to paint. You can also do bone manipulation. Now the bones uh, change how your character animates within Mechanim, which makes them important for changing uh, the feel of your character beyond just changing the mesh. For example, uh, with this kind of shoulder structure, uh, adding in a lot of muscle would be difficult because you would end up adding in so much bulk uh, that the bones would start to malfunction with it and you'd get bulk that really skews and compresses as you move your character around. But you can adjust the bones. So here, we've given her really strong shoulders, really wide shoulders, and we don't have to add nearly as much bulk. And the bulk that we do add will be more in line with the overall structure of the shoulder. Similarly, you can make the legs longer and shorter, the whole character taller or shorter, um, the head taller or shorter. And this is where you can edit the fundamental shape of your character to fit with whatever your vision might be. Now this bone editor, um, in advanced mode it goes away, but that's not a problem. It's still there. You just can't be looking at animations or bone deformations when you're trying to do collision detections with a mesh. So I disable them later on. I'll show you that later. Here you can adjust your character's personality. Right now there's just two you know, easily defined little scales, but whatever you'd like. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and shut this down because I don't want the character to look like that, and uh, if I save her, um, that would be bad. There we are. And we're going to go ahead and go into... Actually, let's go ahead and start up with a completely fresh new character. There we are. So this is a list of all of the things we can add to our character. By clicking here, we can change to male only or female only items of uh, not necessarily clothing layers um, or we can do it on or we can include all now note that there are a lot of neutral stuff and the neutral stuff doesn't show up in the uh, specific gender so for example the tank top the sweater the pants and the, sh uh, the pants and the shirt are all neutral and um, therefore they only show up when you're viewing all uh, so, we can go ahead and add some stuff here. Let's go ahead and put on some shoes. And some pants. And a belt. And a tank top. And a shirt. Uh, but you know what? That's not... Um, that character isn't very... Uh, he doesn't he doesn't have the right body shape for what we want. Let's go ahead and add in our male body one and oh that's beefy but it's not really what we want. Um, let's say we wanted to create a female a, a very strong female character like a warrior or something but even if we add in uh, male and you know even if we take the 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 requisite superheroic male character and then add in the female deform it just ends up looking awkward. So we're going to go ahead and go into the character by clicking here. And we're going to remove these body manipulations. 
and instead we're going to create one of our own. Uh, now you can actually rearrange these however you'd like by dragging them up and down as well. So here you can see we've put the tank top on top of the shirt. If we move down in the character, the upper layers all vanish. So that's why you couldn't see it for a moment there. If we wanted to see how the character will look in the end, we hit View Final. And then we get the baked version. So this looks pretty awkward all around. Um, let's go ahead and take off the tank top and take off the shirt and create a new layer which we'll call um, uh, dressy shirt. So the dressy shirt doesn't have anything attached to it and um, we've still got the old <laughs> the old bump map there. That's fixed. So if we go into here we can see that our dressy shirt has... Oh, you notice that now we've gone into a standard T-pose. There's actually a little bit of an error. It's not a perfectly standard T-pose. Um, I'm afraid that's my, my bad. I'll fix it later. Uh, with the next iteration, but for now you may notice that your mouse doesn't hit exactly where you think it might hit. Um, it, once you get used to it, it's not bad. So the dressy shirt, will make it a, uh, a middle layer, and we will go ahead and then go into this paint mode. In paint mode, we can go ahead and change uh, anything we would like. So let's go ahead and pick a cotton. Uh, let's make this, um, how about this kind of pinkish? and then we can just paint. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit avant-garde because I don't want to spend time while you're watching. And zoom around to the back of the character. Otherwise you will have a backless t-shirt, which is probably not quite what you would like. One thing you may notice is that the brush doesn't always hit exactly what you might think. There are a few times when creases get in the way, and there are a few other times where you may get a blotch appearing somewhere nowhere near where you painted. That's due to the UV map. I'm not entirely sure what the best way is to deal with that. Um, but basically, when the UV map and the mesh aren't, aren't related topologically as closely as you might hope. So if you paint part of the UV map, it may splash over if you're using a large brush. Um, or it may not splash over if you hit an edge. Uh, it's uh, something that I'll have to figure out later. But as long as you keep an eye out for it and are aware of it, it works pretty well. So here we've got an avant-garde shirt. What's more is we can actually go ahead and pick another kind of cotton, uh, let's say this green, and just go ahead and paint it straight in. We can have as many different materials as we would like in our basic shirt. Now the difference between the skin tone, the cotton, and the metal is one of height. So if I pick a cotton, a metal color that's close to that same green, and then I paint, I guess it's a lot darker than the green, but you'll see that it has some serious height to it. See? So, the other thing we can do here is we can paint on creases. So let's go ahead and change over to wrinkle mode and get ourselves a nice small brush. By the way, mass wheeling up or down changes the brush size. So we've got a nice thin brush and you can see that when we start to do things it switches over to the height map. That's so we can see what the heck we're painting. Oh, we're not on cotton. There we are. It's actually a little bit hard to see these wrinkles, but they're there. All right, now we're going to go ahead and take off the uh, mirror mode so that we can get some wrinkles that look reasonably realistic here on the body. Uh, now you're going to want to move slow when you do this because the wrinkle painter is actually not very fast, I'm afraid. And especially badly when I'm especially bad when I'm recording. Um, there, are the, as I said, the usability issues here are there's a lot of them. Um, I'm gonna have to work them out, you know, via iterations later on. But I didn't want to keep saying, oh, "I'll make it better." No one gets to use it until I make it better because that's a great way to talk yourself out of a project entirely. 
and I'm not going to do that. I want this project to succeed, so please use the shitty version. So it's possible to create much, much better clothing than this thing I've thrown together here. I just wanted to show you that you could create whatever you'd like real quick. You can also use the wrinkle mode to paint hems. Um, and if you hold down shift, uh, I guess I should show you. So here we're back into actual paint mode. I switched it. I don't know if you noticed. But if we go ahead and hold down shift, we unpaint. We create gaps. Poof. Like this. So this is basically an eraser. Holding shift will unpaint wherever you go. Now if you wanted to, you can do some cool lace effects. So I'm going to mouse wheel down until I have a one pixel wide brush. And then I'm going to hold shift. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint. You can see that the brush isn't exactly where my mouse is hitting. That's one of the things I was talking about earlier. And we have uh, uh, put a little embroidered bit of lace into our character's shirt. Interesting and easy, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go back over to info mode. And I'm going to change the name of this from dressy shirt, dressy shirt to weird shirt. And I'm just going to go ahead and save it. So now we've saved that, but the whole reason we came in here in the first place is because we don't have a body type that fits what we need. So we'll go ahead and shrink down our inventory. We don't need to see that in the way all the time. We'll create a new layer, which we want at the very top. And we will call it uh, female 2. And this will be our kind of female warrior, female superhero body phenotype, body genotype, uh, shape. Um, so what you do is you go ahead and you click on this, and if it doesn't come up the first time, just click again. Um, but uh, this green ball is your brush, and if you mouse wheel on it, you make it larger or smaller. But make sure that it's not on top of the model when you do that, because if it's on top of the model, mouse brushing is inflating. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and inflate here on the arms, because we want to have a strong character. Oh, see, I missed it. Some usability issues. Get ourselves a bigger brush and just quickly bulk out the back here. Um, since it's supposed to be a female, let's go ahead and give her a little bit of leg. Um, and then we'll go ahead and add in the more muscular, generic sections, like so. Uh, now, you may be wondering, you know, I really want to, if you're trying to build a bodybuilder, you might want to really pack in uh, some, some hips, for example. And we could create the hips as wide as we want, but as you might remember, it's usually better to actually change that via the bone structure. So we're not going to add in a lot of hips. You can give your character more hips by changing their bone structure. Um, so we're going to go ahead and pull in by mouse down, pull in a little bit here, and then beef out a little bit up here. Now it is a female character, so let's bring our brush size down and give her a little bit of a chest. So here's where uh, some of the tricks you might want to use other than just a standard inflate and deflate come into play. For example, if you hold down shift while you inflate, you'll actually bring the shape back down towards the default. This only works with the very first time you create the model. Uh, and unfortunately, there's no such thing as control Z, so um, be careful there. So I'm going to do that again here. There we are. Uh, now the other thing that we may want to go over is grabbing. So I showed you uh, mouse wheeling up and down, but if you wanted to, you could just flat out grab them by clicking and moving. Now the brush here is wider than it looks, so... There we are. 
Uh, so there, now we've got a kind of a female bodybuilder type thing. But let's go up and repair her head just a little bit, because I inflated some of it that didn't need to be inflated. So you can see that she's got an unusually wide jaw. Just gently bring that in line. Now we can go ahead and change her facial shape if we want. There's no reason not to. There we go. So now we've got, oh, I guess her arms are a little bit wussy. So now we have built our own body shape, you know, in the, what was that, a minute and a half minute? So you can go ahead and make whatever character you want. Uh, now obviously we're going to want to save that, so let's go back here, change it to a female. It is, in fact, skin layer. Save it. Uh, now let's go ahead and actually go back into the standard mode. Um, and we can go ahead and change that bone shape to be more in line with what we would like. Well, that might be a little bit aggressive. Eh, something like that's okay. And since she's a bodybuilder, let's make her aggressive and not very prim. There we are. Uh, I have forgotten. Um, did we? Yeah, we actually gave her a full set of clothes. <laughs> so here you can see that um, her shirt actually looks a little bit silly. So let's go back in and edit that. Uh, now, one of the issues you might run into is that it forgets what color you've picked. So you're going to want to remember. Because it won't help you figure that out again later. Uh, that in the long run, you'll actually be using specific materials, and you probably won't be. Um, uh, you probably won't be changing their color. Um, that's part of the meta game, but that's for later. Go back into standard character mode. Let's go ahead and change your name to. Um, um, Bernice. And then notice how it says character ID 0. That's because she hasn't been saved yet. So let's go ahead and hit save. Oh, let's make sure that we can see her and then hit save. There we go. So now if we stop and come back in, you will see that we have added Bernice, the beefy lady, to our list of people we can load. No problem. Also, oh, I meant to start up with a new character. I've got a real bad habit of clicking on someone when I actually want to. There we are. Also, you'll notice that female 2 has been added to the list. So now anyone can make a Bernice. Moreover, if someone else edits female 2's, uh, edits that female 2 layer, it will change Bernice's shape. And if someone deletes that layer, um, so if someone goes in here and hits this and then goes here, then no one will be able to use that layer. Um, in the more advanced version, it's actually got you know people logging in and stuff. There would obviously be lots of protections uh, to prevent you from being able to screw someone else over, or even yourself, uh, by accidentally clicking on it. But this is the crappy UI alpha version, so be careful when you're editing a layer. You may want to create your own rather than use someone else's. Also, uh, if I get more than like a couple of users, this might like scroll off the bottom of the screen and there's really nothing I can do about that yet either. Um, so this is very much an early alpha tech demo sort of thing and uh, I just wanted to show you it, let you use it, play around with it, see what you think. Um, oh, yeah, I think I showed you everything. I'm trying to think if I missed anything. I don't think I have. If I have, it wasn't important or maybe it was cripplingly important. Whatever. Anyhow, um, this is running on the tiniest computer Amazon can give me, so it may not be as responsive as you might hope. Um, and also, I'm not entirely sure if the downloaded versions will work. I'll try to make sure they do. If not, there won't be a downloaded version, just a web version. And that's it.